If you are not a Reddit mod, i.e. you have left the house in the past 10 years, you have surely noticed a worrying trend. Cars are getting bigger, heavier and less maneuverable. Ford Fiestas and Toyota Corollas are being replaced by Toyota RAV4s and Ford F-150s. You might have thought, why is this the case? In this video, we'll answer that question and make the case that cars have to get smaller, not larger. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Before we start, I want to make one thing clear. I have a problem with suburbanized driving these oversized pavement princesses to their office job, to Costco and to the football practice of their kids. I have no problem with people like construction workers driving pickups to their workplace because they actually need their cars to be that big. Cars weren't always so large. In 1989, the most popular car in the US was the Honda Accord, which is an absolutely tiny car compared to today's top vehicles like the Ford F-150. The reason behind why automakers started pushing heavier and bigger cars was, as with everything in this world, money. In 1975, after the 1973 oil crisis, the US adopted the Corporate Average Fuel Economy Standards, or CAFE for short. These regulations pushed automakers to make more fuel-efficient cars and penalized failure to do so with fines. Sounds great, right? There was just one problem. CAFE doesn't apply to so-called light trucks, which includes SUVs and pickup trucks. So, instead of doing more popular smaller fuel-efficient cars, the car industry decided to push oversized SUVs and pickups for that sweet, sweet profit. Apart from skirting CAFE standards, SUVs and pickups in general command higher prices and by extension, higher profit margins. The propaganda, I mean advertising departments of the numerous automakers got to work to portray these plus-sized vehicles as tough, manly vehicles fit for the outdoors. This ad for the Ford Bronco says that it's built for tough and a lion in winter. There was one more reason for the adoption of bigger and bigger cars. In the late 80s and 90s, crime rates ticked up in the US. The media portrayed crime as an epidemic, a constant threat looming in the background. Because of that, people opted for larger, more threatening vehicles to project some sense of toughness and authority. Now, with vehicles like the Hummer, SUVs and similar cars are starting to turn into some sort of Mad Max-esque war wagons fit for the apocalypse, aka the weekly run to Costco. Basically, the auto industry marketed these cars to atomized middle-aged suburban dwellers who wanted to look cool commuting to their office job and to Walmart. These massive ad campaigns resulted in 80% of all new car sales in the US being SUVs and pickup trucks in 2022. In other news, reproductive organ enlargement surgery demand is through the roof. Now, let's move on to the thesis of this video. I hold the opinion that cars have to get smaller in the future, not larger. Massive cars have numerous disadvantages. First, fitting into parking spaces, especially in cities and especially in smaller European cities, is much more difficult. Most parking spaces aren't large enough to accommodate the sheer size of these monsters. Speaking of infrastructure, SUVs and pickup trucks cause exponentially more wear on roads than lighter vehicles. Road wear increases exponentially based on vehicle weight, so the next time you see potholes and crappy roads, know that SUVs, pickups and semi-trucks cause the majority of the damage. Next, the driver sits higher up, and so, they don't see stuff and people directly in front of the vehicle. Child safety, what's that, am I right? The fuel economy also isn't great. Physics says that it takes more work to move heavier objects, and so, these vehicles have to burn more fuel to get moving. SUVs, inflating global temperatures faster than the egos of their owners. The terrible fuel economy isn't the only way that SUVs and pickups destroy the environment. The heavier weight of these vehicles means that they cause more wear on their tires, which then release microplastics and other unpleasant materials into the air and water. There's nothing quite like eating fish laced with tire particles, a true delicacy. Heavier vehicles are also less maneuverable and have worse handling than lighter cars due to their higher center of gravity and higher weight. If you get struck by one of these urban tanks, your chances aren't looking too hot. 
A study by the University of Illinois Springfield found that children are eight times more likely to die after being struck by an SUV compared to a passenger car. Even if you aren't a child, you are more likely to die after being struck by an SUV or pickup truck than a passenger car. This is due to the fact that SUVs and pickups are heavier and their hoods are higher up. If you get hit by a passenger car, you are more likely to go over the hood, which would absolutely suck but probably won't be fatal unless you get hit at high speeds. In contrast, if you get hit by an SUV or pickup, you are more likely to go under the car, which is way more dangerous. The deadliness doesn't stop there. While the drivers of these tanks are safer inside their vehicles, anyone not inside a similarly oversized car is way more likely to die in a crash. A study from the University of Buffalo found that passenger car drivers are between 4 times to 10 times more likely to die in a crash with an SUV, depending on the safety rating of both vehicles. This is due to the fact that SUVs and pickups are usually built to not crumple in a crash and because their bumpers are higher up. So, if you want to do a crappy Mad Max roleplay, buy a Chevrolet Suburban. SUVs and pickups are a regression of automotive design. History has already produced the perfect family car design, which is... This is the station wagon. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. These were the quintessential family vehicles before the SUV and pickup truck craze. In fact, they are still very popular in Europe. For example, here in the Czech Republic, everyone knows what a Škoda Octavia is and lots of families drive them. But even here, oversized SUVs, pickup trucks and similar pavement princesses are spreading like a plague. In fact, this year, SUV sales made up 51% of new car sales in Europe. Unlike SUVs and pickups, station wagons are lower to the ground, lighter and more fuel efficient. Even though they're not kit crushing machines, station wagons have lots of cargo carrying space due to the large cargo space in the back. If you need even more space, you can fold down the back seats. In conclusion, we need to make cars smaller, not larger, due to multiple factors. Safety, weight, road wear, fuel economy all factor into making SUVs and pickups more dangerous and destructive to the environment. That's also why electric SUVs are a bad idea. They are even heavier than regular ones. Not to mention that we need to dig up the whole of Chile to make the sheer amount of batteries to power these tanks. Thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real star. Please like and subscribe, enjoy the bloopers. This has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! By Toyota RAV4 and for- <sighs> These regulations pu- <sighs> This ad for the Ford Bronco says that it- <sighs> Fuck's sake. These massive ad campaigns resulted in an 80 Can I speak English today, please? In other news, reproductive organ- Road wear incre- <sighs> You may not like it, but this is what peak performance-